Someone may question, should one give up the practice of devotional service at some stage, just as one gives up speculative knowledge after attaining liberation? The Supreme Lord says, devotional service should never be given up. I am the ultimate object of worship. So how could one consider giving up my worship? I am the ultimate goal of truly learned transcendentalists. And I am also the means for attaining freedom from delusion. This was previously described by me in Bhagavad Gita. And this is a chapter 18, verse number 54, which begins with the Brahma Bhut Prashantatma. One can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service, bhakti. And when one is in full consciousness of me, by such a devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. The conclusion is that one should always worship me with love and devotion. Elevation to the heavenly planets is the cause of material happiness and attaining liberation is the negation of material desires. It is I who am the supreme goal of the jnanis and the means of attaining it as well. So goal of the jnana and goal of the karam is what? Loving God. That is the goal. The supreme lord is the object of worship for all the foremost philosophers of the universe such as the great sages headed by Sanak, life's goal, the means of attaining it, and the freedom from material desires are easily attained if one simply surrenders unto the Supreme Lord. Those who renounce fruitive activities and mental speculation in order to take shelter of devotional service are not interested in endeavoring for any other goal of life. Verse number three, Gyan Vigyan Samsiddha, Padam Shrestham Vidurmam, Gyane Priyatamo Tome, Gyane Nasau Vibhartihi Mam. Persons who have achieved perfection by means of philosophical and realized knowledge know my lotus feet to be the supreme goal of life. Because such learned transcendentalists are always engaged in trying to please me, they are very dear to me. The Lord herein establishes the truth that he is the supreme destination for all learned transcendentalists. An intelligent person knows that the Lord's lotus feet are the ultimate goal of life and not the impersonal Brahman. Those who are topmost transcendentalists know the impersonal Brahm to be the bodily effulgence of the lotus-eyed Supreme Lord. Such a person is certainly very dear to the Lord. When a living entity is fixed in self-realization through devotional service and is endowed with the transcendental knowledge and its practical application, he attains the perfection of life. Fortunate people serve the Supreme Lord by serving such a dear devotee. This is the actual process for pleasing the Supreme Lord. Learned transcendentalists who are always engaged in my devotional service are very dear to me. Material knowledge or even knowledge of impersonal Brahm is extremely insignificant. So anything else is the means. So that's why he's saying insignificant. The goal is Loving God. By the cultivation of such knowledge, one attains material enjoyment and liberation, but this is not the ultimate goal of life. Verse number four. Tapas tirtham jape danam pavitrani tarani cha nalam kurvanti tam siddhim yagyan kalyakrita the perfection one achieves by attaining even a small fraction of spiritual understanding cannot be attained by performing austerities, chanting mantras, visiting holy places of pilgrimage, giving charity, or engaging in any other pious activities. 
So again, these are the means which will take us towards the Kundi. The word Gyan Kalya means even a fraction of spiritual knowledge. The position one attains by engaging his purified senses in the service of the Supreme Lord after realizing his constitutional position cannot be obtained by performing pious activities, undergoing austerities, visiting holy places, chanting mantras, or giving in charity. So all those actions are needed, but they are not the goal. So we got to see whether those means are taking us towards the goal or not. Loving our beloved. Can we detach from this material nature of ours or not? And attach our mind to God. Verse number five. The smaj gyanen sahitam jatvaha so atmana udhava gyan vigyan sampanoho bhajmam bhakti bhavata. Therefore, my dear Uddhav, you should realize the self by the cultivation of transcendental knowledge. Then with clear realization of spiritual knowledge, you should worship me with your heart saturated with love and devotion. So this heart is given to us to love God actually. The hands are given to us to serve him. This mind is given to us to understand him. Okay, so we have to use these instruments for the right purpose. Shri Krishna says, give up everything else and simply worship me. This is the explanation of Shridhar Swami. Realized knowledge enables one to perceive his original spiritual form. Every living being has an eternal spiritual identity which remains forgotten until revived by the practice of devotional service to the Lord. So that means we are all part of God, unsh of that unshi, but we have forgotten. By all this, we need to remember it again. Without at least a theoretical understanding of one's spiritual self, it's not possible to advance in devotional service beyond the neophyte platform. So theory is needed. That's why we need to study the scriptures. We need to listen to our gurus. The words gyatvaha, so atmanam, in this verse indicate that everyone can realize his original spiritual identity and return to the eternal abode of the Lord. Okay, so anybody can do it, but we got to learn how to do it though, to know ourselves. Verse number six. Gyan vigyan yagyen maam ishtvah atmanam atmani sarav yagye patim maam ve samsiddhim munyo agamana. In ancient times, great sages worshipped me through the sacrifice of Vedic knowledge and spiritual enlightenment. Knowing me to be the supreme lord of all sacrifice, and the super soul in everyone's heart. Not everyone's heart. As a result, these sages achieved the supreme perfection of attaining my eternal abode. One may question, who possesses real knowledge and understands how to practically apply that knowledge? In reply, Sri Krishna said, by engaging in the sacrifice of cultivating transcendental knowledge. And what is a transcendental knowledge? You have to learn how to transcend the Maya. So the knowledge which is beyond Maya, that is a transcendental knowledge. The sages of bygone age had worshipped me as the Lord within their hearts. They worshipped me as the super soul, the Lord of all sacrifices, and thus achieve the perfection of life. Being covered by gross and subtle designations, the conditioned soul forgets his actual identity. See, there's a covering. Atma is there, the light is there, but it just got covered. Covered with the mal, 
विक्षेप अपार मंडल ओके सो लाइट इज देयर इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक ए बल्ब इज देयर फुली लाइटेड बट बट यू जस्ट पुट सम काइंड ऑफ ए डार्क क्लॉथ ऑन इट लाइट इज नॉट कमिंग दिस इज व्हाट हैज हैपेंड थ्रू आवर ओन रेस्टलेसनेस थ्रू आवर ओन फॉल्स आइडेंटिफिकेशंस we have covered ourselves when one renounces his conditional state of existence by engagement in the devotional service of the lord one comes to the understanding that the supreme lord is the only object worthy of worship by thus worshiping the lord in full knowledge of the self the sages of ancient times had attained the supreme abode of the lord so in the ancient times see so just like in bhagavad gita also lord krishna was teaching arjuna that the ancient kings like janak were the karm yogi that's how they lived you can do it too so over here he is teaching us how to become a devotee also let's do one more verse verse number 7 मटीरियल and mind which are transformations of the three modes of material nature okay three modes of the prakriti although they appear very real at present they are illusory because they have no eternal existence so that means they have a beginning and they have a end so they are not eternal eternal is only atma how can the various stages of the body beginning with birth have any relationship with your eternal self the material body is constantly changing and it will cease to exist just as it had not existed before the body must be understood as only a temporary manifestation for the illusory energy of the lord so this maya is a ishwar's maya from that ishwar's maya we have attracted this body by coming to the platform of realized knowledge the gyanis achieve the ultimate goal of life and yet they remain far from attaining me my dear uddhav one who understands my nature will easily cross beyond the spell of nascence this instruction of the lord is not only meant for uddhav but for everyone the transformations of the material body which are born of the three material modes of nature have nothing to do with the pure spirit so so atma is totally unattached the spell of illusion that causes one to identify with the temporary material body was not there in the beginning nor will it remain after liberation from conditional life the living entity is completely spiritual but at present he identifies with his mundane form which is temporarily manifested for the spirit soul there is no birth and death under illusion he thinks now i am alive later on i will be dead sometimes i am happy and sometimes i am miserable so it's like a misidentification the soul has nothing to do with the transformations of the material body and when one is enlightened by spiritual knowledge his relationship with the material body is terminated actually the soul is distinct from the material body although he temporarily identifies himself with it the example is given that a man walking in the forest may see a rope but consider it to be a snake such perception is maya or illusion although the rope actually exists and a snake also exists in another place illusion the surface to the false identification of one object with another it is only due to ignorance 
that the living entities come in contact with Maya or illusion. If this conditional state were eternal, then it would be his constitutional position and it would not be dispelled by the attainment of transcendental knowledge. Saintly persons do not approve of their conception of liberation, whereby one loses his individuality. One cannot realize the absolute truth as long as he misidentifies with the gross and subtle bodies. The gross body and the subtle mind are by nature continuously changing. See, subtle body, subtle body is manabuddhi, chitankar, that is the subtle body. Being under the influence of the three modes of material nature, the pure spirit soul, however, is not subjected to any change or transformation. Eternal, eternity and temporality do not go side by side. For example, the illusion of accepting a rope as a snake is temporary. The rope is real and the snake is real, but the act of mistaking a rope for a snake is an illusion. When the understanding of the rope's presence is awakened, at that moment, at that very moment, the temporary misconception of it being a snake is automatically dispelled. Knowledge of the eternal, which is without beginning or end, is distinct from all kinds of temporary conceptions. The conclusion is that it is not desirable to praise the material body and mind while neglecting the spirit soul. Spirit and matter are not one and the same. With their perverted understanding, the Maya Vadis consider the Lord's variegated spiritual pastimes to be on the level of the mundane activities that are visible in this world. This mistake is caused by thinking of the self merely in terms of negating material qualities. Actually, such a conception is sheer madness born of forgetfulness of the self. It is necessary to become freed from the control of eternal time, which has created a perverted form of eternally present, causing the conditioned souls to see things in terms of past, present, and future. Even while living in the material world, one can absorb himself in the eternal nature by replacing the spirit of enjoyment with the spirit of service. So that means it's doable. While living in this body, while living on this earth, doing our duties, we can absorb ourselves into the eternal nature. How? By replacing the spirit of enjoyment with the spirit of service. That's what Hanumanji did. Seva. He said, I am a Seva of Raghunath. Seva. The conclusion is that it is always profitable to give up the service of Maya by continually worshipping the Lord Hari. So we got to see that what is in our mind? Is it God or is it Maya? Okay. We'll start with the verse number 8 where Uddhav is going to ask some questions over there. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaye Purnameva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much.